A Man of the People, a novel published by Professor Alfred Chinua Achebe, a Nigerian novelist, which is a satire of the post-colonial West African societies, and in this case, Nigeria, where he is reading between the lines how the post-colonial Nigeria evolved into a society of violence and corruption. But besides the satirical book, under the title, A Man of the People, Chief Nanga, the chief character in this book, was a school teacher who turned into a politician, a minister of culture, and indeed, very corrupt individual. But what leads this novel to expose such a society to such an extent in which what would appear in the culture of the Africans as immoral, something unnatural, something insequential and not becoming even by people of faith, for that to become all of a sudden something normal, something people see as the new normal in a post-colonial society and all has so much to do also with the pre-colonial era in the West African countries through which Chinua Chebe was reading a lot when it comes to the applicability of certain standards by the African independent sovereign states and governments. What leads me to this satirical novel, A Man of the People, is the opposite. And that is another thing one should start asking himself or herself about leadership integrity in the Republic of Kenya. The topic today, rather, is indeed very interesting. <laughs> it is the ruling made by Principal Magistrate Victor Wakumule in guaranteeing the Office of the Director of Prosecutions, the relief to withdraw a case of fraud of 7.4 billion Kenya shillings. And this is not the first of its kind. A similar instance was witnessed in 2019 when former governor of Samburu, who was facing charges of corruption of 84 million Kenya shillings, and after approaching the DPP's office, his case was also withdrawn. Let us use these two instances to read through this judgment by the court because the constitution and article 157 that has established the office of the director of prosecutions on 1st July 2011 is also followed by sub article 8 in which for the director of public prosecutions to withdraw or to discontinue a process or a legal process that is before court, 
the court must give or guarantee its permission because the same judgment is disapproving the work of the DPP and it sees that it is not in order to bring a criminal charge before the Honorable Court and Competent Court and obliging the accused to take plea and such plea sometimes according to Judge Wakumule sometimes cause divorce and terrible pain in the persons that are accused. The same judgment is making the following recommendation that it would be better for Kenya to introduce pre-trial chamber and he is soliciting the legislature to enact law that would allow the pre-trial chamber to do or to carry out what is known as plea bargain and in the process of negotiating the plea the accused persons would be able also to be sure of the charges against them but also the evidence the amount of evidence whether it is overwhelming or not but remember that in criminal justice system and criminal jurisprudence under uh, the traditions of English common law, which of Kenya, of course, Kenya is a party to, believes in first presumption of innocence till proven guilty, and second, the prosecutor must prove beyond reasonable doubt that the accused person has indeed committed the alleged crimes. But still, this is not becoming. Because in 2019, the same director of public prosecutions under his signature came up with the plea bargain guidelines that was co-sponsored by the European Union and we have the document. If plea taking is such a solemn thing and uh, both the prosecution which represents the Republic or the sovereign people of Kenya and the individual that is accused must enter seriously into plea taking which is not only solemn but actually something that should be taken with a lot of seriousness it would be an act of perjury to present to the honorable court an evidence that is fact or an evidence that is just falsified documents through affidavits that is a perjury and that is also punishable under law if the prosecutor in his constitutional powers and uh, discretion can order the inspector general to arrest the accused persons but also to carry out thorough investigations into the matter before proceeding for plea taking then what had stopped the prosecutor from carrying out these important and intelligible process just to redeem the integrity of his office. 
The other question is, had he to rely only on the junior office of the DCIO, which is subjected to the Inspector General's office without having also an authority from the IG. But asking these questions again and again and expecting a different answer is not what I'm looking at. Instead, I'm looking at the judgment that is out. The case has since been withdrawn and Mr. Gentleman is redeemed from the charges against him. But still the judge is telling us the gentleman or the gentleman may be rearrested over the same charges if more evidence is found. Is the judge intending to tell the public that this matter is not over? It has just been vacated from the court process? Or this ruling that has since withdrawn the case, the material case before court on the, on the fraud of 7.4 billion Kenya shillings is dismissed of no sufficient evidence. Who says this? Is it the court taking this initiative? In this material case in particular, it is not the court. It is the prosecutor now doing what we call introspection and reconsidering that his prosecution and the entire process is not watertight and he may not proceed with it but he could as well proceed with it until the logical conclusion of the criminal process and allow the court to read into the arguments by the parties and make the final verdict whether to acquit or to convict withdrawal or termination or discontinuation of a case before court is within the prerogatives of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions and this is what is in the Constitution, what is in the Criminal Procedures Act, Chapter 75 of the Laws of Kenya, and it is what is also in the strategic plan, the vision, the objectives, and uh, the working plan of this important office that since had been split from the state law office since 1st July 2011. This office is expected to operate independently but also to be accountable. Let's look at the accountability. This is where I started with the novel by Chinua Chebe, how to hold the culprits of corruption or the agents of corruption accountable. And by who? Who will judge the judge? Who will police the police? Who will prosecute the prosecutor? When we put these questions squarely into the study of practical jurisprudence in Kenya, it's a question of asking oneself, with whom does the back stop? In conclusion, Looking at the writing of Mutua Wawambua,
Professor Mutua. Justice and a siege. The rule of law and the judicial subservience in Kenya, which was published in 2001. And he makes a citation on the former Attorney General, Mr. Amos Wako, who made the following statement, quote, All except the president are equal before the law. But looking at the pedigree and the history of the Kenyan criminal justice system, it is true that coming into existence of the new constitution of 2010 has been a revolution or a turning point from the dark history of the justice system in Kenya to the modern Kenya under the new constitution. But still it seems that Kenya is not yet outside the hook. So much is to be done. There's problem with integrity, accountability, corruption, which of course Chinua Chebe states so clearly in reading his society that is Nigeria in the post-colonial regimes, the corruption, politics, power, women, money. And in this, it is just a question of the novelist revealing to us something that would be like a metaphor. Would people find one whom they would refer to as a man of the people? By Judge Victor Wakumule. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. This is just a preview of our learning process of practical jurisprudence. Then we need to attach this to some legal theories that would guide us and would explain why certain things happen the way they do. And if they do, what would be the way forward? Bye-bye.